So this is the embedded uh, Ceph cluster storage uh, solution. So who are you? Uh, uh, I am the uh, marketing and uh, sales director of Embedded Technology. We are a company, a startup company based in Taiwan for about three years. So and what do you do? Uh, we are doing uh, the Ceph cluster appliance and the powering by the on-base microserver cluster, which is very different from uh, the older of the shelf product that you can see in the market. What is the Ceph cluster? Uh, the Ceph cluster uh, is the um, is the software defined storage? So the basement, the foundation yeah. of uh, the product is based on the object storage. So object storage is just like what you use uh, in Google Drive or the uh, Dropbox. The basement of the technology is using the object storage. What is object object storage? Yeah, object storage yeah. is just like the distributed storage. So it's different from uh, the block storage like you used to uh, before. So that means uh, you optimize in the way the cost is for a hard drive and server. Is it lower cost, or what does it mean if you do this solution? Okay, our solution why is quite uh, special and different from the others. The first thing uh, here you see uh, is not a powerful uh, motherboard connect to so many hard drives. Those are ARM Cortex M. Uh, is the ARM uh, V7? Is the 32 bit only? But yeah. it doesn't matter because we top up it with the software, so it could make uh, it as the powerful storage device. Which which software? Uh, which CPU you have here? Uh, we are using the Marvel uh, 385 Armada 385. All right. So, so it's, it's a dual core uh, 1.6 gigahertz. Okay, dual core ARM Cortex. And uh, dual core ARM V7. Okay. Uh, so that's the 32-bit solution right here. And why do you yeah. have so many small ones here? Because it's the microserver architecture. So inside this one new chassis box, you have eight microserver together. It behave just like a cluster already. So each of the microserver they connect to each other. They communicate peer to peer 2.5 gigabits per second already. 2.5 gigabit per second. They connect to each other and connect this, to each other inside this the cluster. A, this is a board with a chip. This chip. is the microserver. And what is so this the one? microserver is just like this. It's such yeah. small. It's even smaller than your credit card, than uh, smaller than your business card. And you can and swap this, them in and out. Yeah, it's hot swappable. And what is this one? This one is the SSD. So uh, we put this one for the software usage. It's just like the journal disk for our set storage. And what is this one? This one is for the uh, remote 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 management. So it's just like the IPFI, but we are using the auto bound manager controller. And how much bandwidth is going out? On the uplink, you have four times ten giga. So 40 giga, 40 gigabit. Yeah. And uh, and and then you can have a lot of storage here. Yeah, we have uh, a disk here, and uh, one thing special is each micro server here, uh, you connect to its dedicated hard drive. So you can see, uh, you can see it's just like eight independent Linux server inside one chassis box, and uh, all of them they are cluster and they are connect to each other through the onboard switch. So there's an ARM processor in each hard drive that's just driving the hard drive, and there's another one here driving oh, no. a server for there each is, of them? There is no uh, ARM uh, controller here. This is pure the SATA 3 hard disk. Just a hard drive, yeah? Yeah, just hard drive. And the controller is over layer. And that's controlling, that's running a Linux for each hard drive? Yes. And then controlling all the data, and making yes. sure everything's OK, and yes. copying it? Or? Yeah. So uh, once you put, once you write the data into this cluster, uh, the data will be stored distributedly over the disk you have. For example, right now you have a disk, right? If you stack 10 pieces of this model, then you will have 80 disks. And the data will be stored over this 80 disk distributedly. 80? Yeah, if you have 10. Ah, 10, yeah. We could do the stack. So it's a concept for the scale out. So it's not limit. So uh, what's the difference between this and uh, doing, uh, uh, you know, like when, when you can, the, the standards that you have for copying to several hard drives at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, th this one, is this just a, a, a prototype or is ready for mass production? Oh, 
it's ready for mass production. We already have some customers like, using this for their data storage. And the, this concept is very nice for the massive data storage because currently for the SAN or a NAS, they are not capable to handle such huge uh, massive uh, data storage. And they are not able to do the 100% scale out. But for this kind of platform, we could do the scale out very flexible. How is and it different from RAID? Uh, for RAID, the data protection uh, is doing uh, through the RAID controller. But here, everything will be done uh, through the software. Is it better? That's better. How much sure. better? How is it um, better? If you are asking uh, how bad we are, uh, in terms of the power consumption, we could help to save uh, up to 60% power consumption. And uh, in terms of the total cost ownership, we could save at least 60% compared to the traditional ones. So who's going to buy this? Is it going to be Google and uh, Amazon? Or of is it course, be we want companies? to have this kind of the customer, but we starting step by step. So uh, currently, uh, we have two different approach. One is for the enterprise, the middle to big size enterprise, they have layer uh, requirement for the massive data storage. And another kind of customer will be the data center. Yeah, but Google or Facebook, why not? If we could reach them. And so you have a hardware solution right here. Yeah. And uh, this is the text thread right here. It's, yeah. it's called the Mars 200. Yeah, it's called the Mars 200. And uh, as you can see, this is exactly the idea of our architecture. We make all the microservers just like an independent, just like your nerve. So they connecting to each other by the Ethernet, by the network. So we could do the cluster as big as it needs. Nice, so they connect to each other and then you have a software. Yeah, we have the software. So uh, just like I mentioned to you, this is for the, uh, we have the dashboard. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to log in again. Okay. Here. okay, here we are. Yeah. So for the dashboard, you can see the health condition of this cluster. Uh, right now we have a cluster, you have total uh, 14 nodes for the data storage and the 3 nodes for the data monitoring is here. You have 3 nodes for the data monitoring. So how to scale out the cluster? You just by the simple click. Let me show you how to do it. So Ceph, it stands for? It's the name of the uh, open source software. It's a object storage software, but open source. It's called Ceph Cluster Storage Appliance? Yes. So uh, we provide, we made on server, on micro server, and uh, we integrate Ceph uh, on the basement for the technology. And uh, on top of the Ceph, we developing our unified virtual storage software. This is what you see here. So eventually it's come out of self-cluster storage appliance. So as you can see here, uh, right now we have 14 nodes for the data storage, right? If you want to add more micro server into this service, you just simple click and tell the system, tell the cluster which IP address you want to aggregate into this cluster, then uh, assign the IP address and uh, name it and just it can be done automatically. And once the cluster is getting bigger, uh, the data will do the auto uh, balance. So the loading will be balanced as well. All right, uh, ready for mass production? It's ready for mass production. Do you have big orders already? Uh, not very big order, but we have the data center customer they already using our product to do the trial run. So they're testing it out? Yeah. And if they're happy, they'll buy millions? Right? Ah, I hope so. All right, cool. All right.